グループステージ負けられない一戦となりますが今日のゲームどんなところを大事なポイントに望まれまれすかそうですね、まあ、あの同じチームに何回も負けられないんで、まあ、意地を見せたいと思ってます名古屋について警戒すべきところどんなところになりますか、まあ、前線の選手がフィジカル非常に強いので、まあ、そこを出させないように、えー、いい形でプレッシャーをかけれればと思ってます後半の試合運びという点ではどんなところを選手たちと確認なさったんでしょうか。えー、もう一度しっかりとインテンシティ出していくところと、まあ、あとは交代選手も含めて、えー、より攻守にパワーアップできればと考えています。今日ホームでサポーターにどんなサッカーを見せたいとお考えでしょうか。なかなかまあ勝ちを届けられずに、まあ本当に申し訳ないと思っているので、えー、まあチーム全員で、えー、まあなんとか来てくださるサポーターの皆さんにまあ勝利届けられるように、まあ、とにかく持っているものを全力で出し切って、えー、勝ちたいと思っています。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。
条件次第ではプライムステージ進出の可能性もある一戦ですまずこの一戦監督どのように捉えていらっしゃいますかまあもう目の前の試合に集中して勝つことだけに集中して戦っていきたいというふうに思っていますフレッシュな選手も起用されていますけれども今日選手たちにこうどんなプレーや判断大事にしてほしいですかまあ思い切ってやってもらいたいというふうに思っています横浜シートは今季3度目の対戦となりますが今日どんなところがゲームの肝になりそうでしょうかまあどの試合も非常にクロスゲームなので今日も非常に厳しい試合になるという覚悟を持って試合に入っていきたいなというふうに思っています19歳吉田春樹選手今季初出場ですどんなところに期待されていますか昨シーズンもルバンカップ何試合か出てますのでもちろんリーグ戦も出てますしあのやっぱり昨シーズンの経験というのをあの今シーズンは見せてほしいなというふうに思っていますはいありがとうございました、はい Well, hello and welcome to match day four of the group stage of the YBC Levain Cup. Tonight's coverage comes from the Mitsuzawa Stadium as Yokohama face the 2021 winners, Nagoya Grampus. It's crunch time in Group C and Yokohama realistically need a win if they're to keep their quarter-final hopes alive, having lost all three games so far in the group, while Nagoya Grampus will be all but through if they can make it four successive group stage wins. Well, it's the third time that these two have met already this season with Nagoya Grampus winning both of the previous two. A 1-0 win here on the opening day of the J-League was followed by a 3-2 victory in Nagoya in the reverse fixture in this competition last time out just a couple of weeks ago. Loss here to last season's Levain Cup winners, Sanfrecce Hiroshima, left newly promoted Yokohama rock bottom of the table. It's all changed for their team today as only right back Takumi Nakumura keeps his place from the weekend. He and Sho Ito at centre forward are the only two players to have found the net in this competition, both coming in the 3 2 loss at Nagoya Grampus a fortnight ago. It's an entirely different midfield from the last League Cup meeting with Hashimoto called in at left back. Still very much an experimental stage for Shuhei Yomada as his newly promoted side try and find the right blend to survive in the top flight. Referee for this one, Akihiko Ikeuchi. The two captains, Katsuya Iwatake, the centre back for Yokohama, and Shinosuke Makatani at the centre of the rear three for Nagoya Grampus. Well, Nagoya Grampus make three changes from the home tie between these two, with Shinosuke Makatani coming in at centre back, Haruki Yoshida is called into the centre of midfield, the 19-year-old's first appearance this season. Akinari Kawazura is handed his first start on the left wing, having previously played just 10 minutes this season in the first match against Yokohama. 
Centre forward Noriyoshi Sakai struck twice in Nagoya's 3-2 win two weeks ago. Nagoya Grampus won 2-1 at last year's J-League runners-up Kawasaki Frontale on Saturday, leaving them tucked in behind leaders Vissal Kobe, just a couple of points adrift. Coach Shuye Yomada saw Yokohama promoted to the top flight as runners-up in J2 last season, finding life in the top flight a whole lot more difficult. Kenta Hazegawa, the 57-year-old, how could he ever live up to that 2014 season he enjoyed as the coach of Gamba Osaka, leading them to a domestic treble just a season after winning promotion. Nagoya Grampus have lost just once in 11 games this season and arrive here five unbeaten since a surprising 1-0 defeat at Sagan Tosu. Yokohama will give anything for just a win anywhere this season. Beaten 3-0 by Sanfrecce here. They've lost five of their six home games this season. A 1-1 draw with Avispa Fukuoka on the 1st of April is the only match they haven't lost in this stadium, just two points picked up from the opening eight matches in the J-League this season. And defeats in all three of their YBC Levain Cup Group C matches. The odds are always stacked against them, though, in favour of uh, what was a very difficult group. Sanfrecce Hiroshima, the winners last season of this competition. Nagoya Grampus, the 2021 winners. And Vissel Kobe, the league leaders, those three also the top three in the J-League this season. That is the uh, kind of group that Yokohama find themselves up against. Yokohama in the traditional light blue, Nagoya Grampus in the changed all white. With uh, Brodersen, the German goalkeeper, Matthias Mareich, Brazilian centre-back. On to Yuri Lara. Shoito and Marcelo Ryan, the Brazilian, expected to be the front two for Yokohama this evening. Personnel and formation being tinkered with all the while by Shuhei Yamada as he looks for the right blend. There's not been a lot of criticism of the kind of football that Yokohama FC have been playing this season. It's just the results that have been a problem for them up until now. Shimoto. To Cassio on the wing for Yokohama. Just to get the cross in early away by Kawazura, turned back in first time by Nakamura, the only player in the starting 11 for Yokohama who started the weekend's loss to Sanfrecce Hiroshima. Opportunity for fringe players to get themselves into the mindset of Shuhai Yamada. That's a free kick for Yokohama. Foul by Haruki Yoshida. Kento Hashimoto is over this, the left back. 23 year old who's on loan with the club from Ranafa Yamaguchi. He's uh, made over a half a century of appearances for the side. His last two appearances for Yokohama FC have both been in this competition. Came off the bench in the 3 2 loss against Nagoya Grampus in the last game. Plenty of run up on this one for Hashimoto. Gets it over the wall. And it wasn't too far away. Clip back in again. And the header down into the penalty area. The goalkeeper just about grabs it. 
spectacular. First half chance of the game, going the way of Yokohama. Here's Nakatani. Back from Nagasawa. Now Takeda. Koda. That's out of play. Throw for Yokohama. Shimoto. With Sven Brodersen. Former German under 21 international, still only 25 Brodersen. Yet to feature in the league this season, having played 35 of the promotion campaign matches. Sakai, Kumara covering well though for Yokohama. Yuri Lara in the centre of that Yokohama midfield, 28-year-old Brazilian, who joined the club for this season from Vasco da Gama, He's featured five times in the league. Still work to do though clearly to convince Shuhei Yomada, the uh, Yokohama coach, that he should be uh, a regular in the starting 11. Yoshida, one over the top, cleared away by Marais, taken down by Maruyama, and on by Nakatani. Maruyama. Katani, Fuji outside him, decided to play it more centrally, opened up for the shot from uh, Yoya Kida. Ambitious one from there though. Well, there's that Yokohama free kick again. Well, it may have been sneaking in at the year, near post from Kento Hashimoto. Vicious dip on the ball and Takada did well to get across and just make sure who generally plays second fiddle to the Australian international Mitchell Langerak as the first choice Nagoya Grampus goalkeeper. their last three games, Yokohama in all competitions since that 1-1 draw here with Avispa Fukuoka. Lost 5-0 to Yokohama F Marinos in the uh, big derby game, that one will have hurt. Ashimoto. Good delivery again for Takeda to deal with, he took no chances and went for the punch instead. Yokohama corner. Solo Ryan being closely watched in there. And it's flicked on at the near post and beaten away by Takeda. Terrifically worked set piece from Yokohama. Here's Hashimoto. Clipped in towards the edge of the penalty area again, but. No foul, surprisingly. Did seem to be a push on the edge of the box, which the uh, Yokohama players were alluding to. Now Hashimoto's set pieces, causing early problems for Nagoya Grampus. 
flick on at the near post, a great piece of goalkeeping from Takeda. And how important was the header away from Haruki Yoshida. And that was on its way in. It's a terrific save. header was from uh, Katya Iwatake, the, uh, the centre-back. Put on by Nakumura. Ruyama, though, towards Sakai, who's barely had a touch of the ball yet, the Nagoya Grampus centre-forwards. He's got four goals this season in all competitions, Noriyoshi Sakai. Them coming in this competition scored both the goals in the 2 0 win at Vissel Kobe and two of the three in Nagoya Grampus's 3 2 win against Yokohama on match day three of the YBC Levain Cup. Remember, only the group winners qualify automatically from the five groups, they're joined by the three best runners up to make up the eight teams in the quarter finals. No buy for the teams involved in the uh, Asian Champions League straight to the last eight, as has often been the case before. This will be the last season of a group stage in the League Cup. Sakai. Next season it will involve the teams from J2 and J3 in a straight knockout competition. Pressing from Nagoya Grampus. Wada helped out by the uh, referee's whistle. There's the front post head. It was Yuri Lara, actually, the Brazilian. So close to the opening goal. Attacker not being on his feet and then helped out by Yoshida with a timely clearance. Yokohama would have been in front. Time they've uh, travelled here this season, as I was saying. Uh, Nagoya Grampus made here on the opening day of the 2023 J League season, won by a goal to nil. Scorer that day, the Danish striker Kasper Junker. Not involved today, though, not even uh, amongst the substitutes for Nagoya Grampus. There he's struck four J League goals for Nagoya Grampus this season. Promising start to the campaign, they're very much in the mix at the top of the table. Three wins out of three in their YBC Levain Cup group. Cassio swings the cross in to Marcelo Ryan. It's blocked away well by Fuji. Shimatu able to uh, pick up the second ball. Is it away? Here's Matthias Marais. Iwatake. The camera. on that over the top though right the way through to Takeda here's Maruyama to Nakatani now Fuji 22 year old Fuji he's just one short of 50 top flight appearances in the league for Nagoya Grampus They're on the front foot here it's a good ball through it opened up all of a sudden for Kida Get a second bite at it. Support here from Kawazara. Now Maruyama. Well, this was gone.
such a big step up to the top flight. Remember, only one team is relegated from the top flight this season in Japan. Yokohama FC occupying that position as the only team so far in the league without a win after eight rounds. Still plenty of football to be played. Enjoy Grampus looking for a, a way through here. And that was an ambitious effort. Didn't really sit down for the shot. Or hit a Masakoda. Perhaps they should have had a free kick on the edge of the box. Guy frustrated with himself. Hidamasa Kota. Japanese under 23 international. He's only 19. Started the uh, last two League Cup games. The wins against Yokohama and Sanfrecce Hiroshima. Shimoto. Now Yoshida. Koda, Fuji, Not really got going yet, Nagoya Grampus, it's often the case in League Cup matches when teams make a lot of changes in the early group stage games, moving into the uh, second half now though of the group stage, everyone has played each other. Casio. Again by Wada. The camera. Yamasta. Yamasta again. Don't know where in the end, and it's a throw to Nagoya Grampus. Exactly the opposite record to each other after the opening three games of this group. Nagoya Grampus have won all three, scored seven, conceded three. Well, Yokohama, they've lost all three, scored three and conceded seven. Opportunity here maybe though, Takada has already been busy. In the uh, opening quarter of an hour for Nagoya Grampus. And mainly from uh, Kento Shimoto's set pieces. The uh, left back is over this one again for Yokohama. Swings it in again, it's another dangerous ball. Stewart's not away, fired in first time, Takeda with the save. And then pounces on the second ball as well. Oh, Hashimoto's delivery, looking the best route to goal. That was a fine strike from Takoya Wada. Takeda equal to it again though. He gathers that one gratefully. The counter could be on here for Nagoya Grampus. Well defended by Matthias Moraes. 22-year-old Brazilian who joined the club in 2022, played just once in the promotion push last season. He's yet to feature in the top flight, Moraes. But has played in all four of Yokohama's League Cup matches. Now, Yuruma. Nagasawa. By Fuji. Kida made the break through the middle. The ball wasn't delivered, though. Camera. A bit of pressure from Nagasawa.
Mateus Moraes. One of three Brazilians in the uh, Yokohama starting 11, along with Yuri Lara and Marcelo Ryan. Joy Grandpa Sav Tales in midfield. Brazilians have had such an influence on Japanese football since the professional era began in 1993. Great Zico, remember, played here for Kashimura Antlers. Here's Marais. Iwatake. Okay, again. Wada. Marais. Shimata was the uh, short option. Casio is the player who picked up the ball. Switching the play here, Yokohama. But in open play, they really have struggled to get in behind Nagoya Grampus. It's the set pieces they need with the quality of delivery that Kento Hashimoto has produced in the opening 20 minutes here. Yanista losing possession. Here's Marais. Playing it on again. The uh, cross swung in by Nakumura. Another opportunity then for Hashimoto. Yuri Lara in there again, who put his head to that early opportunity that. So nearly got the better of Yohei Takeda. In swinging corner. Well dealt with this time though by Nagoya Grampus. Only as far as the camera. Header on by Marais. Bit of communication needed there at the back for Nagoya Grampus. Players going for the, the same ball, but eventually clearing it. Shimoto's throw. Fuji wins the throw for Nagoya Grampus. A club who completed the domestic set when they won the League Cup in 2021. Having been champions just the once in 2010, twice Emperor's Cup winners in the 1990s. The League Cup was very much the, uh, the missing piece, which they finally put into place. The defence of their campaign finished in the quarter-finals last season. They were beaten 4-1 on aggregate by the Rao Reds. that once again paired them with Sanfrecce Hiroshima in the group stages. Sakai with the foot in. Kida with the challenge as well. Cassio. By Wada to Marais. Watake. Yamasta with the throw. Held up by Marcelo Ryan. Camera. 
And then on by Mirage. Shimato with the delivery. And well defended. Marcelo Ryan was waiting to pounce, but you cannot afford Kento Hashimoto in the form he's been in in this first half. A free reign at delivering the ball whenever he likes. Wasn't closed down at all, the left back. And didn't need asking twice to swing the cross into a dangerous position. Piece of defending in the end from Aruyama. It's the third corner for Yokohama. Shimoto. Such a consistent delivery that he puts in with the left foot. The camera. Camera again. Space here for Yamasta. through the first half, Yokohama nil, Nagoya Grampus nil. The goal fest so far that we enjoyed a, a couple of weeks ago. Yamasta into the penalty area. Really well covered though. Trying to win the ball back, Yokohama, but the break is on here with Kida. Sakai ahead of him. Tales in support as well. Tales couldn't get a foot to it. Here's Koda. And the potential counter-attack comes to nothing for Nagoya Grampus. Marash climbing all over Koda. Yomada not happy with that decision, just a, a word in the ear of the uh, official. Well, Yokohama have enjoyed most of the set pieces so far. Opportunity here then for Akinari Kawazara to deliver for Nagoya Grampus. Guy hasn't seen too much of the ball so far. Maybe he'll get an opportunity here. Kawazara's ball in. Get away by Marcelo Ryan, who was back helping out his defence. Kawazara. Enjoy Grandpa's throw. Kawazara finding himself on the opposite side of the field. Having just taken the free kick that side. With both legs of the League Cup quarter final against the Rao Reds last season, Kawazara. He's played just 10 minutes in all competitions this season, not featured at all in the league. Came on as an 80 minute substitute in the 3 2 win at home to Yokohama a couple of weeks ago. Takuya Wada has been lively in that midfield for Yokohama. This is his effort from the edge of the box. It stung the palms of Takeda. Good positioning actually from Takeda. Had he been anywhere else in the goal, he probably wouldn't have got anywhere near that. It was a sweet strike from Takuya Wada. He made the move across Yokohama last year from F Marinos, where he'd spent the last three years. Struggled for regular football though, just 34 league appearances for the Marinos. Fuji trying to intercept and does so. Hashimoto. Back with Brodison. Marais. Wayward ball from the Brazilian cut out by Arroyo Fuji. Now Koda. 
Gonzalez, Kida Sakai buzzing around up front for Nogoi Grampus, but the ball isn't finding its way through to them. The Katani. Again to the captain. Maruyama. Katani. Back to the goalkeeper from Nagasawa. Certainly been the busier of the two keepers, as uh, Yohei Takeda in this first half. Couple of really decent saves. Here's Tales, the Brazilian. Just 21, Tales. A couple of league appearances this season. Spent the last couple of years on loan with uh, Roasu Kumamoto. J3 and J2, one promotion with them while on loan in 2021. <laughs> Hadn't featured at all Tales in the league for uh, Azegawa this season until the last couple of games. Came off the bench in the last two matches. It's the third successive League Cup match that Tales has started in midfield. Alongside Kida, just in behind Sakai, he's the lone striker. Feral punt from Brodison. Marcelo Ryan. Ashimoto. No foul. Referee happy to wave play on. Maruyama with it. And now he does stop the play. And Yuri Lara has stayed down. There's a hefty collision with uh, Hiramasa Koda. The Brazilian coming off the worst, but I think he's OK. Just a, a knock to the jaw or maybe the, uh, the side of the neck. Must be wondering when that first win is going to come. Shuhei Yobada. have a great history in this competition Yokohama they have never been beyond the group stage in the League Cup Although this is only the fifth time that they've played in the competition which has generally only been available to those teams in the top flight Looks into the center too close to Brodison though Right idea from Tales, but got it far too close to the German goalkeeper. Is that a fairly easy first half so far? I think when the draw was made, realistically, they probably thought that that poor run of exiting in the group stage was likely to continue, given the three teams they're up against. It's Sakai, it's driven across the box, but cleared away by Yuri Lara. And that's given away rather cheaply by the camera. Plenty forward here in white. And Fuji on the overlap and does win the corner. Great energy from Haroya Fuji. Made up the numbers. Just couldn't get the delivery in though. Mirai blocking it behind. The Wazara. Across to take the corner with the left foot. She will stay in there. Maruyama forwards. Nakatani as well. Sakai looking to add to his four goals that he's already scored in the opening three matches of the uh, YBC Levain Cup this season. He scored against San Freche Hiroshima with a couple of doubles against 
Bissau Kobe and Yokohama for Sakai. Hasn't had a sniff though in the opening half an hour here. Six in there for Nagoya Grampus. It's fair to say Kawazara's deliveries haven't caused the same problems defensively for Yokohama as Kento Ashimoto's have for Yokohama at the other end. A couple of really hairy moments for Nagoya Grampus from Ashimoto's set pieces. Wada. Under pressure from Kida, who does well, still going Kida, trying to make the space for the shot, Tales hits it, straight into the defence though. And Marais should stay down, I think he took the full brunt of that shot from his fellow Brazilian Tales. It's a good run by Kida. Comes out to Tales. Oh. Yeah, takes it full on, Matthias Marais, full belt. And that's certainly going to knock the wind out of you. It's a painful one, but it is one of those that can just be run off in a couple of minutes. Good hit from Tales, though. He'll be frustrated that uh, his fellow Brazilian got in the way of that. He was certainly travelling. So far, so good in the opening half an hour for Matthias Marais at the back with uh, Katsuya Iwatake. Fending off the threat of Thales, Kida and Sakai so far. Gasawa. Nakatani. Maruyama. Nakatani. Here's Yoshida. Towards Sakai. Kida. This is good play by Nagoya Grandpa. So it's a risky challenge. Penalty. Well, the referee points to the spot. Frustration for Yokohama. Kida picking up the ball though, a surging run forward. It's the captain Iwatake who lunges in to Kawazura. And there was never any doubt. Nowhere near the ball. It's a rash challenge from Katya Iwatake. Well, the referee still explaining his decision, but no need really. It was a poor challenge. Fine play from Kida to play the ball through, and then Kawazara with the positive run in behind the defence, forcing the mistake from Iwatake. And Noriyoshi Sakai with the opportunity then to bag his fifth League Cup goal this season. Seven and a half minutes to half time. Yokohama with the the big chances really from Hashimoto's set pieces. And now it's the big chance of the first half to Noriyoshi Sakai. First real test then for Brodison in the Yokohama goal. Yokohama's future in this competition for the rest of the season in real jeopardy now. 
cannot afford a fourth successive defeat and it's saved by Brodison. It remains goalless. It was a poor penalty in truth from Sakai. But the supporters behind that goal go absolutely wild. Sven Brodison guessed the right way. Wasn't convincingly struck at all by Sakai. And Brodison beats it away to keep the scores level. Still have the resulting corner to deal with. Frustrating for Nagoya Grampus, who have uh, not exactly been up against it. But they've had uh, Yohei Takada, their goalkeeper, to thank for keeping them level from those early Hashimoto set pieces. Didn't look convincing, did it? He struck it into the ground, actually. And Brodison guessed the right way and made the save. Good goalkeeping from Brodison. Five minutes to the break and a corner for Nagoya Grampus. Swung in towards Sakai, gets the header on. And the resulting corner is in. Well, having survived the penalty, how frustrating. Yoya Kida turns it in for Nagoya Grampus. And Yokohama FC do fall behind. Well, the corner swung in. Nobody really dealt with it, and Kida was the quickest to react at the back post. Slams it into the roof of the net. And it is Yokohama nil, Nagoya Grampus one. And Noriyoshi Sakai is the most relieved player out there, you can guarantee that. Having seen his penalty saved by Brodison, the resulting corner ends up in the net anyway, courtesy of Yoya Kida. And that is just the way things have been going this season for Yokohama. Marais. Flag up for offside. Katani to Fuji. Now Koda. That's a terrible throw. The uh, piece of control from Shoito is just as bad, really. Very quiet first half from Shoito. You remember, got on the score sheet in the 3-2 uh, win for Nagoya Grampus against Yokohama last time out. Maruyama. Koda. Yoshida. Away from Iwatake. And no free kick. Sakai. And Marais hacks it away for Yokohama.
winded there. Haroya Fuji, all deflecting into him. Uh, a similar problem to what Matthias Marais had at the other end. Well, Kenta Hazegawa's team in front, but probably won't be overly happy with the first half performance from Nagoya Grampus. improvement so far though on last season they finished eight some nine points adrift of the top three which of course is uh, Champions League qualification currently second in the table two points behind Vissel Kobe it's going to be quite a title race and indeed quite a race for all the major domestic honors this season in Japan, very open top flight, all the sides capable of beating one another, we've seen that already with Yokohama, F Marinos and Kawasaki Frontale, the top two from last season, both relatively struggling, Kawasaki more so than uh, F Marinos, who are still up there and very much in, in the mix, but having already lost a couple of times this season. Uh, defensive pressure here, Yokohama, and a good block from Brodison to deny Kawazara, who suddenly found himself through. Well, that's a poor challenge. As we get confirmation, there'll be three minutes added on at the end of this first half. Haruki Yoshida. Nowhere near the ball, catching uh, Yamasta. Well, that's that turn by Kida. Good save by Brodison as Kawazara got through. Lively first half, Yoya Kida. Confirmation of the yellow card for uh, Haruki Yoshida. going to be a throw for Nagoya Grampus. Yoshida he's given it away. Fuji back to cover. Cleared by Takada. Well defended by Fuji. Yokohama looking to finish the first half strongly aggrieved at being a goal down having had the better chances until the penalty that was missed by Sakai but the failure to defend the resulting corner from that penalty must be so frustrating for Shuhei Yomada here's Wada three in the penalty area for Yokohama Fuji with the foot in around all over the place there the captain he did well and the crowd appreciating the effort and the press in the penalty area from Yokohama's forwards penning Nagoya Grampus back here in the dying seconds of this first half and the referee's whistle brings a bit of welcome respite for Nagoya Grampus Takoya Wada has been really lively in the midfield for Yokohama Remember, no wins in 11 matches in all competitions this season for Yokohama. But it's been a familiar story to this first half. They've played OK, but have been conceding too many goals. Launched by Takada. And Nagoya Grampus have to thank, really, for not going behind early on. And they do lead at half-time, thanks to Yoya Kida's goal. Five minutes before the break, Noriyoshi Sakai has already scored four goals in this competition, unable to convert a penalty, but Kida scoring from the resulting corner at half-time. It is Yokohama nil, 
Nagoya Grampus won. Thank you. 
Welcome back to the Mitsurawa Stadium. Yokohama nil, Nagoya Grampus won at half time. Match day four of the YBC Levain Cup Group C. It does look as though the home team Yokohama are about to make a change for the second half. Here's uh, Koki Sakamoto, who is waiting to come on. Grampus making changes as well. Casio, the player replaced for Yokohama. It's looking like a, a double change as well. For Nagoya Grampus. Kida, the goal scorer, is uh, making way for Nagoya Grampus. Riku Yamada coming on to replace him. And Hidamasa Koda is going off as well to be replaced by uh, Yuki Izumi. So both coaches busy at half time. Interesting move to uh, take off Kida for Nagoya Grampus. He's been really lively in that first half, not just his goal. But Yamada and Izumi are both on for Nagoya Grampus. Toki Sakatamo. Yokohama. Sakatomo, uh, new signing from Roazo Kumamoto, the uh, second division side. He's featured regularly in the league. He's played seven of the uh, eight matches in the top flight this season. Uh, Sakamoto. First appearance, though, in the League Cup this season. And indeed, the uh, first appearance in the League Cup in his career for Camelton. So can Yokohama FC turn this around in the second half? It is nil-nil in the other game between Sanfrecce and uh, Bissau Kobe, which does mean if Yokohama lose here, they will be out with two games still left to play. As remember, only the top two can qualify. The winners do qualify. The runners up only if you're one of the three best of the five groups. Izumi, the substitute. The lapping run and the cross in from Tales. Rodderson did well at the near post to beat it away. And a lively start to the second half from Nagoya Grampus. Tales finding himself a bit of space. It's a difficult chance to try and tuck in at the near post, but Rodderson equal to it. Sakai looking to make up for that penalty, which he saw saved by Brodison before Nagoya Grampus took the lead from the resulting corner. So no harm done for the team, but frustrating for Sakai himself. Rice trying to win the header. Shimoto. Marcelo Ryan.
Shimoto. To nowhere, really. Fuji with uh, plenty of time to get across and cover. Rodison. Katani with the header. on Yamasta chasing after it the camera with the throw for Yokohama Shimoto, plenty of options forward here. With the substitute, Sakamoto. Still trying to find a way through. This is Nakamura. Turn by Yamaster and then fired at the goal, but well off target in the end. Set up for uh, Yuri Lara to hit it. Wada have done well actually in the central areas for Yokohama in the midfield. Fuji. Izumi's touch uh, wins the free kick. Fuji. Well, Yoshida to uh, Nakatani. Takada. Yama. Izumi. Tala's outside him. It's played centrally instead. Quickly closed down by Yuri Lara, though. And now the counter on here for Marcelo Ryan, but that's a foul. the player take it down it's been a largely frustrating evening so far for Marcelo Ryan his second season in Japanese football after joining from Bahia in Brazil where he'd only made five first team appearances scored a couple of goals in nine appearances in the promotion push last season Marcelo Ryan but awaiting his first of this campaign is the Did beat Nagoya Grampus here 2 0 in August of 2021. As they did on the opening day of the J League this season, Nagoya Grampus are leading by a goal to nil. Played in behind. Yamasta pulls it back and it's off the post. Oh, Marcelo Ryan. So unfortunate. Danger not over yet. And Yokohama must wonder what they have to do to score in this game. Takeda with a couple of fine saves in the first half to deny Lara's header. Wada's effort from the edge of the box. He was nowhere near that one though. And here come Nagoya at the other end, and it is 2 0. Buried into the back of the net by Yoya Kida. And what an evening he's having. Two 0 for Nagoya Grampus. Just seconds after Yokohama were within inches of leveling. Lovely first touch from Kida. 
outside of the foot and then buried under Brodison. He was coming off for the second half, but it's clearly not the case, is it? I well, believe Kenta Azegawa must be that he did keep him on. And it is Yokohama nil, Nagoya Grampus 2. Well, how frustrating for Yokohama. And you see Sakai's penalty saved by Brodison, the resulting corner. Tucked away by Kida. And then Marcelo Ryan hits the post. The Goya Grampus go up the other end and help themselves to a second. Yamada beaten to that. Well, they're buzzing now, Nagoya Grampus. And looking for more goals. Kida makes his way into the centre again. And it's pulled back to the edge of the box. And Sakai is denied by Brodison. Well, the confidence of these Yokohama players must be completely short. It's not showing in their football. But in terms of results, everything is going wrong for them this season. for a fourth successive defeat and two of them against Nagoya Grampus in that run. Nagoya Grampus heading for 12 points from their opening four YBC Levain Cup games. It is putting them to the verge of a place in the quarterfinals. Can't mathematically seal that today. The first goal from Kida reacted brilliantly to tuck it into the net. Tales has pulled through Kida's touch and he buried that one's a lovely finish. And he's really enjoyed himself this evening. He now does make way. And the, uh, the substitute, the man who replaced him, Naldinho, was almost in immediately. Dino, the 30-year-old uh, Brazilian on. Three appearances in the J-League this season. And he's yet to score for Nagoya Grampus since joining from uh, Chengdu in China. That's set up nicely for the shot. And over the top from Sakai. Sagan Tozu striker. Scored eight goals in 29 appearances in just one season there. He's been on the books at Omiya Ardea, Albirex Nigata. And a lone spell with a Vispa Fukuoka. He's been about a bit. Sakai. 30 now. Second fiddle to Kasper Junker in the league this season though. Watake. Kamara into Marcelo Ryan looking for the run of uh, Sakamoto, the substitute. Marcelo Ryan down under the challenge. Yuri Lara trying to force his way through. Put on by Ashimoto. In space for Sakamoto. Defended again by Nagoya Grampus. Cruising at the moment, leading by two goals to nil. Yuya Kida with both of them. Now 
Coutinho chasing that one. Looks as though he's going to be the furthest forward of the front three with Sakai dropping in with Tales behind him. Well, he could play Tales in the hole behind a front two. Camera. Yamaster after this one. He's quick. Managed to keep the ball in play, in fairness, but only for a throw in the end to Nagoya Grampus. <laughs> Izumi. Three changes made now for Nagoya Grampus. Since half time. Yamasta. Shimoto. Taken down. Free kick for Yokohama and an opportunity for the player that was fouled to deliver again. for Yokohama. Tawa Yamane will come on and replace him. And Yuri Lara, the Brazilian midfielder, is also to come off. Erataka Mita. The latest change for Yokohama. They use their squads in this competition, the Japanese sides. Yamane Mita, Sakamoto all on now for Yokohama, who are heading for a 12th game without a win this season in all competitions, and heading for the exit door with two games to spare. And we'll give him a, a couple of matches, of course, that's some free experimentation, Shuhei Yamada, as he looks to pull Yokohama away from the bottom of the table. Remember, only one team goes down this season. The top flight returning to 20 teams for 2024. And Yokohama will be desperate for their return to the top flight to last for more than just one season. Izumi, Fuji. Well, both goals were clinical from uh, Yoya Kida. No hat trick though for him this evening. Taken off with uh, well over half an hour still to go. They got a feeling that Kida's job was done. Not played in the league this season, uh, Yoya Kida. He certainly sent a message to his manager this evening. Shonen Belmare on Sunday and then it's a trip to the champions Yokohama F Marinos and then a home match with Vissel Kobe to come in their next three Nagoya Grampus Kida must be uh, certainly up for consideration for those three games given what he's shown tonight he took both his chances clinically and no wonder they're hopping happy behind the, uh, the goal to your right the Travelling the Goya Grampus supporters. Not swinging from the corner, the header down. Backed away. And the referee, I think, has pointed to the penalty spot here. I think he's suggesting he saw a handball in there. Well, there's one or two stunned looking faces in the penalty area. Iwatake, the player who gave away the penalty in the first half. It wasn't obvious from our angle, let's see. Ball swings in and yeah, that's me. That seems extremely harsh. It was Mitter actually, the substitute. There's no 
handball there, comes off the head and hits the arm. Almost immediately. There's no way he can get out of the way, but I guess the arm was up. There it is. Now from that angle, it is conclusive. And now a chance for Neldinho. Hits the post and cannot score, of course, on the replay off the post. Well, this is quite extraordinary. They've missed two penalties in this game now, Nagoy Grampus. Broderson sent the wrong way this time. And still, Neldinho awaits his first goal for the club. Back off the post to him. But, of course, he cannot score on a replay. On a rebound, rather, sorry, off the frame of the goal. It's different if the goalkeeper saves it. But the player of the opposition has to touch it before you can tuck away the rebound. So although he tucked it away, Neldinho, no goal. And it remains 2-0. For the second time in this game, Nagoya Grampus have failed to convert from the penalty spot. And the wait goes on for Neldinho's first goal. Well, that most certainly would have put the game to bed. Rodderson gets right in the first half with the save from Sakai. And he was well beaten with that penalty. Saved by the post. Ashimoto. The camera. Yamane. Inside, but stepped into trouble. They need a goal back. They need some kind of foothold in the contest. Yokohama. They're actually the better team for large periods in the first half, but it's not been the case since half time. Nagoya Grampus building on that first half lead given to them by Kida just five minutes before the break. Added a second, seven minutes into the second half. Fuji. Iwatake. Check on again towards Marcelo Ryan. Nagoya Grampus winning all the loose balls now. There's a chance maybe for Takuya Wada. Sakamoto trying to uh, flick the ball past the defender, but he's eluded well. Sakamoto. Well defended again by Izumi, but it's a, a throw for Yokohama. Through there for Hashimoto. Neldinho. Trying to link up with Sakai. Rodderson with plenty of time to clear it away for Yokohama. Conceded all three goals in the second half at the weekend here against San Frecce did Yokohama. To holding their own for the opening 45 minutes. Following the derby hammering against uh, Yokohama F. Marinos. Conceded eight goals without reply. It's now ten. Including the two here. now wearing Leonardo on his shirt, it seems. Yokohama throw. Well, they're certainly getting the job done for Kenta Hazegawa. 12 points from four games. May not mathematically see them through, but realistically, even if they were to finish second in the group with 12 points, you imagine that would be enough to see them through. Kamato. Still a bit of work to do though. 
that work will be done at home. That's what's so impressive about Nagoya Grampus's run in this competition. Three of their opening four games have all been away, and they've won all of them. Their two remaining matches, both at home, Vissel Kobe in May, and Sanfreche Hiroshima in June. The camera. Back again to the right back. Slips it through. Three to aim for in the center. Kamato was challenging, it's off the head of Izumi though, and it's a Yokohama corner. It's pretty much a, a month's break now in between the next two matches. 24th of May, the next round, and then the 18th of June for the decisive round. Deep delivery again by the camera. Meter. Cross in. Aldinho with the header away. Yamane. Heavy challenge by Naldinho. Still pushing Yokohama. Oh, they could grab a goal back. You never know. Still time. It's Marash. This is Kobe are leading at San Frecce Hiroshima. It means they would move on to six points with the holders. As things stand, Nagoya Grampus would be six points clear at the top with two games to go. They would just need a point from their remaining two home matches to secure top spot in the group and a place in the quarter-finals. into the centre, headed away by Fuji. That is where they exited last season. Remember the uh, season before that? They won the competition. Shimoto. Fuji is there. There's a lack of movement up front really now from Ito and Ryan. Looking pretty blunt in the final third, Yokohama. The camera. Saying comfortably headed back to the goalkeeper by Izumi. Look, pretty much says it all. It's been another frustrating evening for Yokohama, the J1 League's bottom club. There's a chance now, maybe, for Ito. Behind for a corner. Had plenty of those in the game, set pieces, corners around the uh, Nagoya Grampus penalty area, but despite the early promise of uh, Shimoto's deliveries, which could have produced goals for Yokohama, really created too many problems since. It's the end of the game for Shoito. He's really struggled to make his mark this evening. Salo Miniero. Brazilian coming on to replace him. It's a deep cross, too deep for Marais, who's at the back post. Let the play though by the centre back, gets the cross in towards Yamane, who heads it on and then headed behind for another corner. Work though from uh, Matthias Marais. Didn't see that quality from a, a centre back in an attacking position. Touch too high for Yamane though to get a significant header on it. Beaten away by Takada. Still plenty forward in light blue. Marais. Now Wada. In towards the uh, substitute, Miniero. It's 
Marcelo Mignero, who's yet to feature this season in the league for Yokohama. Scored four goals in 19 appearances in the second tier last season. Here's Naldinho. Touch back, it's deflected in towards Sakai. Comfortable gather for Brodersen. this season for Saulo Mignero. He's got two goals in the last three games of the last campaign. Hasn't been able to hit the round running this time around though, the 25-year-olds. Really using his squad this evening. Shuhai Yomada has to really, has to ring every inch out of it. Struggles this season. Marais. Iwatake. Shimoto. Now Marais. Iwatake. Now the camera. Tokyo fullback Takumi Nakamura. Sakamoto. Right. First move away from the capital, Nakamura. It's a regular last season. Promotion push. Looks into the centre again. Almost. Fell kindly, Minero, and it's just wide. Well, it's just that kind of evening, really, for Yokohama. Solo Ryan in there, fell to him, got a touch to it. And then Minero, it was a block tackle, actually, rather than a shot. As uh, Izumi tried to clear it away, but such is the way when you're struggling for results. Something that could easily have ended up in the bottom corner, just trickles past the post. Have had their chances this evening, Yokohama. And yet, they trail again by two goals to nil. They are heading for their 10th defeat in 12 matches this season. Marcelo Ryan. Did well, determined play, Minero. Now the counter could be on here. Neldinho. Oh, that was a terrible first touch. Iwatake across to make the challenge and then was caught by the Brazilian striker. It's a lovely little flick off from Noriyoshi Sakai. Terrible first touch though from Neldinho. Invited the challenge from Iwatake. Collided with the knee of uh, Naldinho. Well, should have had his first goal for the club this evening. Striking the upright. Yomada knows that it could have been a lot worse, but also a lot better. Strange kind of game, really. Yokohama have certainly had the chances to be level, but then you bear in mind that Goy Grampus have missed two penalties, although the first one was negated because the resulting corner ended up in the net anyway. So a good run and cross. Katani defending well, it stays in play. Hooked away by Nagasawa. Flick by Sakamoto. 
Minera almost playing now as a second striker up there with Marcelo Ryan. He really didn't link up at all with Shoito before he was replaced by the Brazilian. Marais with the header. He's had a good game back there for Yokohama. Hasn't done himself any harm in terms of a more regular consideration in the league this season. Not featured at all so far from the bench or from the start in the top flight, Matthias Marais. Playing in all four League Cup matches is Naldinho, Izumi, and again by Tales, Fuji. Katanik. Maruyama. Mateus there again to clear it away from Yokohama, but a bit too nonchalant really. Had more time and space to do something with that rather than just stroke the ball back to Nagoya Grampus' possession. It's Fuji. Down by Sakamoto. A bit of space now for Tales. Maldinho outside him. Sakai the other. Overrun it though. Tales. And now a potential counter for Yokohama. As we head towards the final ten. Level in the other game. And again between Sanfrecce Hiroshima and Vissel Kobe. happens in that game though Nagoya Grampus are almost there just the league leaders and the uh, YBC Levain Cup holders to come in their last two games but they are at home Tales coming off worked hard but hasn't had too much impact really by Koki Toyoda. Here's a me with the throw for Nagoya Grampus. On my Sakai to no avail. Shimato with the header away. Marais. Certainly haven't troubled Yohei Takada as much in the second half as they did in the early moments of the first Yokohama. Hello, Ryan. Ball hasn't stuck with him at all. Up front for Yokohama. Gassi are dribbling the ball away, and now the counter on here for Yokohama, who have three forward. Ball across the box from Yamane, though. Not finding anybody in a light blue shirt. Here's me all the time in the world just to uh, take the ball away. Looking a beat inside now, Yokohama F. Marinos. Certainly none of that early pressing that we saw when Nagoya Grampus are in possession in their own half. 
Maruyama. Back with Takada. Katani to Fuji. Katani, just a pose possession exercise at the moment for Nagoya Grampus. Maruyama, Shimato's header. Marais is Naldinho. Played in China and uh, the United Arab Emirates prior to this spell in Japan. Naldinho. By Toyota, the substitute. Taken down by Ashima to sees yellow. It's only the second booking of the night, actually. The first for Yokohama. The Tiger Ashima has just come on. Ashima replacing. Marcelo Ryan. He really has struggled. Surprising that both the forwards have uh, been replaced. <laughs> Toyota with the free kick then for Nagoya Grampus. Shiyama is a defender by trade. He's uh, come on for Marcelo Ryan, and they're just going to throw him on up front. Here's Toyada with the free kick for Nagoya Grampus. Five minutes to go. The best of deliveries from the Nagoya Grampus substitute. Shiyama, another player is yet to feature in the league this season for Yokohama, the 23 year olds. Joined the club last year from City Rivals, F Marinos. Who he also didn't make a league appearance for. Inside the last five minutes. Two goals from Yoga Kida separating these two sides Sakai and Naldinho both failing to score from the penalty spot for Nagoya Grampus one saved one off the post Naldinho on his heels well covered by Hashimoto So again, next night for Brodison, penalty save and then conceded from the corner. Couldn't do anything about the uh, second key to goal. It was a really clinical finish. The camera. Now Marais. I think he can hold his head up. The Centre back for Yokohama, decent game. Look composed on the ball. It can be casual once or twice, but generally a good game from Matthias Marais. Minero. Got early chance after coming on just past the post. Salo Minero. Seen a lot of him since though. Dino, right on the ball a bit. So 
Kamato. Wada. Just a couple of minutes away from exiting this competition yet again in the group stage. Yokohama. No points from the opening four. Would be possible for them to finish in the top two. Space for uh, Sakamoto who gets the cross in. And that will be a free kick for Nagoya Grampus. San Freche Hiroshima here in May and then finish away to Vissel Kobe. But two dead rubbers as far as Yokohama are concerned. With this defeat, no longer able to reach the quarterfinals for the first time in their history. Have a very poor record actually in domestic cup competitions, Yokohama. Their best performance was reached in the last 16 of the Emperor's Cup. Back in 2016, I've never played a quarter-final of a major domestic cup competition. That won't be changing in the YBC Levain Cup, and they're in danger of conceding a third goal here. Good block by Iwatake. I went through that time for Yamada. And then the cross in, gathered by Brodison. Towards Minero. It's Fuji. It's been very, very comfortable for Nagoya Grampus since that second goal from Kida. Dino trying to feed it into Sakai. Squared into the centre, but Moraes was there to clear. Unselfish play from Sakai. Even with his uh, failure to score tonight from the penalty spot, four goals in four games in the League Cups, a pretty good return from Noriyoshi Sakai. Kenta. Zagawa can pretty much put the uh, YBC Levain Cup to bed now. A couple of home games with Vissel Kobe and San Freche to wrap up a place in the quarterfinals. The Wazaro with the throw. Stabbed away by Iwatake. Just four minutes to be added on. Now the counter on here. Sakamoto. Again, it breaks down far too easily from Yokohama, but they have a second chance, although Nagoya Grampus have plenty back now. Good challenge, almost fell for Minero again. And a throw for Yokohama. to repeating anything like he achieved in 2014 with Gamber Osaka. Former coach of uh, Shimizu S Pulse as we see that Minero half chance again where he slid into the defender and caught it. Will anyone ever do that again to win promotion in 2013 and then in your first season in the top flight to lead aside to not only the J League title but the League Cup and Emperor's Cup all in the same season. It's a unique achievement from Kenta Azegawa. 57 now, former Japanese international himself, capped 27 times in his playing career. Former striker with uh, Nissan Motors, the forebearer of Yokohama F. Marinos, the uh, city rivals of Yokohama. So knows this city well, Kenta Hazegawa. Well, 
Well, a good win for his side. He'd be frustrated not to have scored, though, Sakai. But he knows it was a poor penalty. And you see the replay actually kicks it into the ground before Brodus and Guess right and made the save. Marais. Launched by Brodison. One by Marais to Hashimoto. Through the legs. Nicely played by Hashimoto. And again, it's been the case in open play all evening. The final ball really not up to par from Yokohama. Wada, one of those in light blue, can hold his head up. He's had a good game in the midfield. Mita, Hashimoto. Still fighting for a consolation, in fairness. Sakai hoping for one last chance, maybe. Certainly showing their coach that there's plenty of depth in this squad. Nagoya Grampus and the performance this evening and the performances throughout this Group C campaign in the YBC Levain Cup. Minero. Away by Nakatani. Anywhere will do now. The job is done for Nagoya Grampus. Hashimoto. the other way barely time to take it though four minutes to be added on we're now in the sixth minute of stoppage time Back to Takeda he certainly played his part in this victory this evening with his performance in the opening half an hour when Yokohama were looking a threat from those set pieces well, Yokohama have never gone beyond the group stages of the League Cup. That record continues as they exit the competition after their fourth straight defeat. But a fourth straight win for Nagoya Grampus puts them on the verge of the quarterfinals. There's still a bit of work to do, but two goals converted by Ryoga Kida. One just before half-time and one just after is enough to see Nagoya Grampus take a firm hold on Group C. It's finished. Yokohama nil, Nagoya Grampus 2.
中継をご覧の皆さん、名古屋グランパス木田亮賀選手です。おめでとうございます。ありがとうございます。十七歳でのプロ初ゴール、そしてツーゴールの大活躍でした。今のお気持ち聞かせてください。と三試合目だったんで、やっとゴール決めるとめっちゃ嬉しいです。十七歳九ヶ月四日での公式戦のゴールはクラブ史上最年少記録とのことです。これについていかがでしょうか。いや試合前にあのスタッフの方に言われてたんでちょっと意識してたんですけど、まず一点取ることだけ意識してたんで、まあ後からついてきたのですごい良かったかなと思います。まずは一点目セットプレーからでしたけどもゴールシーン振り返っていただけますか。とまあ前日のトレーニングからまあそこのワープッシュするってところはまあすごい言われてたんで、まあそこすごい。常にそこをまず狙っとこうっていうふうに意識してて、そしたらまあ本当にすごいドンピシャのボールが来たんで、まああとは合わせるだけだったんで、まあすごい良かったです。そしてファーストタッチで相手をかわしてのツーゴール目、ここはどんなことを意識されていたんでしょうか。とも浮き玉が来た瞬間に、まあちょっとファーストタッチで足元に置いたらつつかれるんで、まあちょっとずらして、まあシュートはまあ振り抜こうって思って、まあすごいシュートまで一連ながらすごい良かったかなと思います。今日のツーゴール、今後に向けて大きなゴールになりますね。そうですね。やっぱまず一点取れたんですけど、まあここで満足しないで、まあもっともっとリーグ戦だったりに絡んでいけるように、ここからトレーニングからもう一回やっていきたいと思います。今日のヒーロー、名古屋グランパス木田亮賀選手でした。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございます。
プライムステージ進出が決まりました今はどんな心境でいらっしゃいますかはいまあとりあえずほっとしています今日は本当にあのユースに助けられたあの試合だったというふうに思いますのであの木田がよく決めてくれたというふうに思っています前半の指名そして後半の立ち上がり木田選手の2ゴールどのように評価されますか特にあの PK 外した後の1点目っていうのをよく決めてくれたというふうに思いますあれが大きかったと思いますあの2点目は本当に落ち着いてあのしっかりと決めてくれたというふうに思いますので、まあ、どちらも素晴らしいあの得点だったというふうに思いますあの PK2 本外して<笑>勝てるとは思わなかったので、まあ、そういう意味ではあの、まあ、両フォワードあのユースに負けないように、ね、頑張ってもらいたいなというふうに思っています。今日チームとしての狙いは横浜市相手にどれくらい出せたとお考えでしょうか。あもうあのほぼほぼパーフェクトに出したと思います。あのゼロで抑えてあのしっかりと得点も取りましたし、えー、それ以外のチャンスも作れたのであの非常にいいゲームをしてくれたというふうに思っています。チームとして2年ぶりのルバンカップ制覇に向けて最後に抱負をお願いします。はいあの昨シーズンもプライムでまでは行ったんですが。えー、とその後に負けてしまったので、えー、なんとか、ね、今シーズンはあのもう一度、ね、ルヴァンカップ取れるようにあのみんなで戦っていきたいなというふうに思っています長谷川監督でししたたあありりががととううごござざいいまました。